In this short video, we'll look at uh, developing the equations of motion of a combined linear rotational system. So you have a linear mass here and a rotational mass here. And these are connected by this spring. Uh, F is an external force. Uh, as always, we need to have an inertial reference system. So this is the initial reference system. The first step is to establish directions of motion. Now you have to be careful when you establish directions of motion. If there is a spring or damper between two bodies, we try to assign directions of motion in a way that the spring or damper is in extension. So this spring is in between M and J. So we need to put this in extension. So I'm assuming that the mass M is moving in the positive X direction. So to put this in extension, what I'll do is I'll move this point two in the positive x direction like so so for that the body has to rotate in the counterclockwise direction and if this body rotates by theta the linear motion of this point xj is given by r theta now here we are assuming small displacements theta. Now this will not be valid for very large displacements theta. So this is a small displacement model. Uh, so for this spring to be an extension, xj should be greater than x. So they put that condition in xj, which is equal to r theta, should be greater than x. The second thing we do is establish force magnitudes now. Uh, so we look at the spring here. Uh, this moves by xj this moves by x so the extension is xj minus x the force in that spring is k times r theta which is xj minus x so this is just the magnitude of the force if you look at this r theta is greater than x so this quantity is positive so this this is okay now if you look at uh, this body this is moving or rotating at a speed theta dot so this damper here at this point this point is moving moving in the negative x direction at rate xj dot so the force in this damper the magnitude of the force in this damper is given by b times xj dot but xj dot is nothing but r times theta dot why is it r times theta dot because if you take diff the differentiation with respect to time of xj r is a constant only theta varies with respect to time so the damper force fp is b times r theta dot so next we do is uh, do the free body diagram for the cylinder. Uh, if you remember, the spring is in extension. That was a configuration chosen. So if it is in extension, what the spring tries to do is come back to its original position. So it will pull on both ends in opposite direction. So at this end, it will pull in the negative x direction with the force magnitude given by this. What happens to the damper? Damper is being pushed at this point in the negative x direction. What the damper is going to do is push back. So that force is going to go that way in the uh, positive x direction. Now, these forces will be balanced by the reaction at the bearing, but these forces also will cause a torque. The torques, there are two torques. One torque is due to the force Fk, uh, is given by R cross F. So we are assuming R is a vector, FK is a vector, but for two dimensional, you could just say these are scalars. Um, and uh, there's a torque due to FB, which is given by R cross FB. Now we need to understand which torques are positive and which torques are negative. Any torque that makes the body rotate anti-clockwise is considered positive. Now if you look at this torque due to this force here, it is holding on to the body here and trying to pull it this way so the body will tend to rotate anti-clockwise therefore tau k is positive similarly with tau b here this force right here at this point tries to pull the body this way positive x direction therefore it will try tend to rotate the body in the counterclockwise direction so tau b is positive so given the free body diagram now we can go ahead and write the equations of motion we use the Euler uh, equation which is the analog of the Newton second law for rotational bodies I read J minus theta double dot equal to summation of all torques Y minus theta double dot we assume that the body is rotating in the clockwise direction clockwise direction is negative therefore this is negative 
and you sum all the talks and the talks are both positive we discussed that we put in the numbers here and we have the final equation here just like just like before we check the coefficients of theta double dot theta dot and theta they are all the same sign and so we are good now we go to the free body diagram of the mass so the mass is an external force in the positive x direction and there's a spring force now like i said before the spring was in extension so it will try to pull inward so on this end it is going to pull in the positive x direction so the spring force is going to be like so in the positive x direction the mass is moving in the positive x direction we assume that configuration so we can write the equations of motion so balance of forces in the x direction i write m x double dot is sum of all forces in the x direction notice that x double dot is positive because we assume that the mass is moving in the positive x direction so what are the forces there is f which is positive x direction fk which is positive x direction so this is the equation here we substitute for the values and then write our final equation here. Once again, notice that the uh, sign of the coefficients of x double dot and x are the same. So we, our equations are good. That's the end of this short lecture.